Hello and welcome to The Journey Home. I'm your host, Marcus Grodi. Some of you may recall we featured a roundtable episode from Sweden, which featured Professor Alf Herdelin discussing John Henry Cardinal Newman's motto, to be deep in history is to cease to be Protestant. The professor works at the University of Uppsala, the well-known Swedish university town, and he sat down with us to tell us in depth about his conversion. It's wonderful to have you, Professor, here to the program. Uh, this program, for over 10 years, I've had the great privilege of, of interviewing men and women in their journey back to the Catholic faith. We've done a lot of our programs, of course, in America. We wanted to make sure people realize it is just an American phenomenon. There are uh, men and women returning to the Catholic Church all around the world, and that's why we had the great privilege of, of joining with you. I always ask my guests to kind of back up and start at the beginning. So if you would, how about a little summary of your early spiritual journey? I am the eldest child of a Lutheran minister, a clergyman. They call, them, uh, they call themselves priest, priest. Right. Uh, and uh, I'm the eldest of five children. As a child, we lived far uh, up in the north in, uh, uh, in the forests, <laughs> uh, very poor people. And uh, my childhood was rather dramatic, many poor people and much snow, and so my mother was in practice the nurse there because there was no, there was no doctor there. there was, the nearest doctor was uh, 50, more than 50 kilometers away and the nearest hospital was uh, 120 kilometers away. Mm. So that, is, uh, that was very dramatic. Then we moved down to uh, not not far from Stockholm, to the suburb, because uh, of, of school problems, we uh, we had good schools. So I I'd went to school here in Stockholm, not far from here, in Norra Latin in Stockholm. I made my 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 final years there, and but I, I was not a bad I was a bad boy <laughs> at school. Uh, I was not. I was interested in all things except school things. So I, I went twice uh, in the class, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, was hopeless in school. That changed though when I came to the university when I could study what I wanted to study. But before that, I, when I was 18 years uh, old. I went to a summer meeting, Christian summer meeting, and uh, experienced, I think, a conversion. Mm. And I then uh, came into a group of friends who were all of the high church mm. sort. There, were, there was then in, in the Church of Sweden a high church movement very similar to the Anglo-Catholic mm -hmm. movement in England and with much inspiration from them, from England. And uh, so I was converted and I considered from that day myself as a Catholic. You know, as the Anglicans in England say they are Catholics, you are Roman Catholics and we <laughs> are Catholics, they say. So uh, it was in Sweden, I thought I was a member of a branch of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have never been a Lutheran in my in my thought, in my thinking. I have never been a Lutheran because the conversion brought me into the Catholic, Catholic theological tradition. Even though you were still Lutheran officially. No, I belonged to the Church of Sweden, which right. was officially. Right. But I, in my thinking, was I have never I have never cared for Lutheran. I never. How did your father feel about your conversion? Uh, he was, uh, at the moment, uh, I, I, I influenced him so that after me, he also turned to high church. After me, uh, okay. on, but he was a good, good, uh, lovable Swedish uh, clergyman. Hmm. Uh, no, at that time, you, you considered yourself Catholic, and that's like the Anglo-Catholics would have had a similar mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you feel about the Pope? Uh, oh, I, I think that the remarkable fact with this conversion was, I have thought of it many times, was that I have never said anything against Rome, mm -hmm. against the Roman Catholic Church, uh, as 
or most people in Sweden did, of course. Mm. Huh? Catholics were, were considered Christian. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. I had a school friend who, uh, uh, who who said they are not the Catholics are not Christian. Mm. That was a common attitude among low church right. or free church people in Sweden at yeah. that time. We experienced that in America too. Mm. You know, that, mm. I understand that very much. But I have never, I have from that moment in '45 when I was converted, I have never. Uh, criticized Rome or, or said anything against it. Mm. But I studied after some years and after military service. I came to Uppsala in '49, studied, started with a study of theology in order to become, become a priest. And uh, that was, uh, to me, a very great experience. I had a teacher, for instance, one professor, for instance, who who uh, uh, lectured about the church fathers. That was an experience because we had never heard anything about them before. And, uh, and I myself uh, I went to the Catholic church near, no, no, not, not this one, but another one in Stockholm, and bought my first Catholic books. And I remember the first Catholic book I read was the German one by Professor Al, uh, Karl Adam in Tübingen, famous yes. Catholic oh, theory. So. Das Wesen des Katholizismus. And he cured me from all liberal theology. Is that the spirit of Catholicism? Mm. His book, Spirit of Catholicism? Was yes. That the book? Yes, oh, yeah. Yes. Well recognized. I read that in German as uh, when still at school. Okay. And uh, he, 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 that is directed against Harnack, the great mm -hmm. German liberal theologian, mm -hmm. and he cured me. That book cured me from uh, modernism, liberalism for, for my life. <laughs> That's a great book. We uh -huh. recommend that many times. Did, at that point, I mean, first of all, your early church fathers, you said, was a big <clears throat> stage for you that you hadn't read before. Did that, you're, you're Catholic, even though you're still state church, mm -hmm. you're high. the early church fathers, did that start pulling you towards Rome mm -hmm. at that point? Mm -hmm. uh, you were, and then, of course, Father Adam. Uh, yes, and so I entered the, the Swedish ministry. I was ordained okay. in 54 and served as, uh, in the countryside in the Diocese of Stegnes from uh, the uh, before Christmas time, 54, to uh, f f uh, uh, 58, when I went to England to prepare my, my doctor's thesis. Uh, we, I had decided that this sh uh, should be my, the theme of my, of my dissertation. Uh, so I went to what is Oxford. The, what is the theme you announced? <laughs> Let the audience know what your theme is, was going to be. Yes, that is my thesis, which that is my doctor's thesis. And uh, I started preparing that in England and, um, uh, and uh, went to, to, to Birmingham, to the Newman Archives, and to, to Oxford, Pusey House, and other places in Oxford. And, um, uh, and then I, when I returned home, I had got a... Uh, uh, scholarship uh, for in Uppsala, so I returned to Uppsala, left my parish and returned with the family to Uppsala. And I, I have a family since 54. I wanted to tell them because the, uh, the title of his thesis was the Tractarian Understanding of the Eucharist. Why don't you tell the audience the significance of that? The Tractarian. Yes, the understanding Tractarian, of, the of course, is one, one uh, title of, of the Oxford movement, not to mix it up with the Oxford group movement. Right. So you would say Tractarian because, and they, and they are called Tractarians because their main publications were tracts for the times. Mm -hmm. Tracts for the times. Newman wrote many of them. And uh, and he also wrote wrote the last one, Trek Ninety, which was a scandal. It was considered a scandal when it appeared in 1841. A bit too Catholic, right? He became Catholic later, because but he there he there uh, interpreted the Anglican formularies, thirty-nine articles, etc., in so as not to exclude the uh, the, the 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 Council of Trent. Mm. 
and that was of course a scandal in in that in the Church of England of that day. And um, when when I worked with Newman and the Tractarians, I also came to see more and more that my position as a Catholic mm. in the Church of Sweden was impossible. It was as impossible as for Newman to be an Anglican and think that you are a Catholic in the Church of England. So he helped me to convince me that that uh, that uh, if they, there are no branches, there are no branches. You know, they kept to the branch theory, right. huh? but th there are no branches. Uh, so, so I you have been so strong as to start thinking that there weren't branches; there were breakaways, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, so <laughs> I, 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 I realized then that uh, that I would never return to a, a parish. Mm. But it took some years to to mature, to make it. Mm. Uh, so I was received formally uh, 63, August 63. Did your um, family come with you? Uh, no, they did not. I, I had then, I had then uh, two children. I have now four children mm -hmm. and seven grandchildren. <laughs> uh, no, my wife didn't turn Catholic either until just ten years ago. Now, <laughs> so I had to wait for her thirty-five years, <laughs> mm, about. Mm. But I have never pressed her. I have never pressed her. She went with me. But uh, suddenly, it was clear, even to her, that it was her place in the Catholic Church. So we are both Catholics now. All right. And since becoming Catholic, you've what have you done now? Uh, you're a professor. I yes. I uh, when I returned, then I, I I had the disputation, doctor's disputation in '65, mm -hmm. two years after my reception, and um, what should I do? I couldn't return to Sweden. Well, what should I do? Should I be a, a, a high school teacher? What should I be? I, I had been a librarian, a librarian in the university library while I was writing this book. I was a librarian. My wife was also a librarian at the university library in Uppsala. And uh, so I wrote this in nights and evenings after having full time as a librarian. And um, uh, and after uh, my disputation, as we say, I got um, uh, became docent, as we say in Swedish, as this assistant professor mm -hmm. in the, at the theological faculty, which was uh, I wasn't the first; I was the, sec the second Catholic to become uh, to get a post at the, at the theological faculty. Um, but it was very unusual, because <laughs> as a rule, of course, all all. Uh, teachers, professors, and assistant professors at the theological faculty were uh, were Lutheran sure. or nothing, or nothing, <laughs> or nothing. <laughs> or no yes, the, there were at that time seven or eight professors with chairs. Um, all except two were were ordained in the Church of Sweden, and two were nothing. Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I became then a uh, um, docent, docent, mm. as in Germany, docent. Uh, and I have taught at the, in the theological faculty all the all the time since forty, since uh, sixty six, and until my retirement. So you were their token Catholic. I have been um, I have been uh, been in in the, the, my field is, is church history with okay. particular emphasis on liturgy and uh, spirituality such, such things. Mm -hmm. I have taught historical theology, historical theology, and the best thing, of course, to to, to convince people of the truth of Catholic Catholicism is to teach history. Well, let me ask you that, because mm -hmm. Newman made that statement. Mm -hmm. yes. To become deep in history is to cease to be Protestant. I need not preach. I need not preach. It's just enough to, to state the, the historical facts. <laughs> We'd love to ask you some history questions, too, Professor, about that. Um, a, a large number of our audience doesn't know about the sources of Catholicism in Sweden. Oh, yes. You can talk a bit about that. Uh, yes, we, we have had bishops 
here, Catholic bishops here, who speak about us as an immigrant church. And I think that is rather a mistake because uh, the Catholic Church came to Sweden in eight, uh, 830 with Saint Ansgar, who was the Apostle of Sweden. And at least since, uh, since uh, the, the former millennium, me, mm -hmm. what do you say in English? Million, uh, uh, the last 1, century? Uh, oh, 1,000, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, there has been a Catholic Church in Sweden for f at least 500 years before the Reformation. Mm. 500 years. And in the Swedish, uh, if you go uh, on our roads, you can see some still some 1,000 churches which were originally Catholic mm. churches built during the Middle Ages. They are now all, of course, uh, Protestant, right. but they were built, and with many, many of the, they have been well preserved as a rule, with beautiful paintings. Next year, we are celebrating a centenary uh, church painter who died 1509, mm -hmm. just before the Reformation, mm -hmm. who has painted uh, some 30 churches in this area around Lake Mela. And they were all preserved. Very well, most of them are very well preserved. So that you can go around and look at these churches with paintings and Bredidos, Bredidos, from the Middle Ages, yes. the old... Yeah, yeah Bredidos, the uh, three, yes. sometimes... In, in, yes, in, 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 yes. In, we have hundreds of them in Swedish mm -hmm. churches. Which is, is different than, let's say, what happened in Germany or England yes. after the Reformation. Well, that depends on, we have never had Puritans in Sweden. Mm. We have never had Puritans and Catholicists. Yeah. And Luther, Lutheranism has been rather conservative in liturgical matters. It was considered adiaphora, un, unimportant things. Mm. They could be preserved, and they have been preserved to a great extent. They were thrown out of the churches later, but not at the Reformation. Mm. But during the 18th century, during the Enlightenment, oh, they were, some of them were destroyed and some of them were, of these things were whitewashed. Yeah. Huh? But they have been restored. Yeah. All of them yeah. have, we're have seeing been that in restored. England too, as well as America. I mean, we had the same thing in America. Uh -huh. that, that, so that the, yeah, you, you can go around in Sweden and look at these uh, old Catholic churches, which are to a great extent preserved, hmm. roughly, Roughly as they were at the time of the Reformation. That, of course, they have taken away all altars except one in the most cases. Behind us, there's a picture of a saint in uh, Sweden, uh, Saint Bridget. Yes, of course. Brigitte. Yes, I have, I have, I have uh, uh, written about her, spoken about her, and translated her into Swedish. Uh, the selection of her revelations I, I published. It was published at the Jubilee year, uh, 2003, because she, she was born, we think, 1303. Mm -hmm. So it was centenary. Mm -hmm. And with the, I had a, also organized a, a symposium, scholarly symposium, international, in Wadstena, where her monastery was built with uh, speakers from, I think, 11 countries, from USA, from Canada, from this, It seemed like there was a, a resurgence of interest in, in oh, her. Yes. Is that because oh, of yes. that, that? Oh, yes. And uh, Birgitta, Birgitta is, of course, a marvelous hmm. woman, exceptional in her knowledge, in her courage, in her strength. She was, is the, was, the mother of, was the mother of eight children, of whom two uh, one became a brother in Varsena, two uh, daughters became Cistercian nuns. And what is a little bit of her history? Did she, did she become a religious later in life, if that's what happened mm. with her? Did she become a, a nun later in life? What was no, she, was, she was, beca never became a nun. Okay. She, she went to Rome in 1350 and, and did never return to Sweden. But he, I mean, she, she wrote her the rule the Bidgetian rule and organized, prepared uh, her convent in, in Valstina while in Rome together with his daughter Katharina, mm -hmm. Catherine, 
uh, who after the death of, of, of St. Brigida in 1373, she returned with uh, a group of Swedish priests mm. and uh, pilgrims who had stayed with Brigida in Rome, returned to Sweden and started building the monastery, mm. which is a remarkable building. You can see it still. Yes, the church in Vatstena, the monastic, the, the old abbey, uh, of course it isn't as in, 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 in the Middle Ages, but the, 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 the fabric is still standing, with many, many pictures, many, uh, many furnitures from that time, etc. There are Byzantines again in Vatstena, but they they are not a little, they are, they have built a new new church, a new monastery, a new convent. So Birgitta is one of the famous Catholics from the Swedish Middle Ages, but she is not the, the only one. There are plenty of them, uh, of important uh, Swedes from the Middle Ages who who are known until to, until until now. Uh, the missionaries. Tell us about tell us about a few of them. Hmm? Go ahead, Professor. Tell us about a few of the famous yeah. ones from the Middle Ages. That particularly one or two you'd like to point out. I mean, Ansgar, who was the th right. he came eight hundred and hundred and thirty from 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 uh, uh, first from France from Germany to Sweden. Uh, but his mission was not very successful. So the real start, the real start, because it is to be around uh, at the beginning of, of the 11th century when uh, Sweden, the king of Uppsala was baptized mm -hmm. and uh, there were English missionaries, Benedictine monks coming here, mm -hmm. St. David, St. Siegfried, St. Eskil. We have a city called Eskilstuna, mm -hmm. that is his city. Named after him. Yeah, mm -hmm. not far from here, not far from Stainers where there is a cathedral. Uh, so we have many, many important, important uh, people in the medieval Catholic Church. And I, I often try to remind our Catholics, our, our immigrants, we have as the most Catholics in Sweden are, are either from, um, from, from Poland or from Czechoslovakia mm. or from, from Yug Yugoslavia, so, uh, they are, they are cr Croatia, etc., and the later from from uh, Latin America, mm. Latin America, and now from from Asia, we have Catholics in in Swedish uh, congregations from all over the world. They are coming here, and I try to to say to them, you are not the first Catholics in Sweden, <laughs> but we have a long, long Catholic history, and um, uh, the Catholic Church wants created the Swedish language as a theological language. Yeah, I was wondering about that, because often when I hear about German missionaries coming in, well, I'm wondering, well, what language did they speak when they came to communicate the gospel to they the had, people they, they found They had interpreters. Here? They had interpreters, of course. Okay. Otherwise, they would. But the Swedish language, as, as, as a written language, and cultivated language that was created by these early uh, mm. Catholic Christians during the Middle Ages, particularly at Vadstena Abbey, because that was, of course, that was, as you know, a, a convent of sisters and a convent of brothers, mm. and the brothers particularly, but not e even some of the of, of the nuns, translated things and wrote things. So they they gave the Swedish language its its first uh, written reform, probably re uh, translating the scriptures. Uh, yes, they they translated uh, a series of of, uh, of uh, Catholic classics hmm. like uh, from from Ital from uh, Latin into Swedish or from German into Swedish. Hmm. And uh, thus, thus they are the real creator of the Swedish language, the, the, the Vastena brothers. Hmm. And the majority of, of Swedes probably don't realize that they've got their written language well, but from if the you church. Speak, <laughs> if you speak to, to, to um, uh, uh, the scholars, uh, yeah. uh, they, they now know that it is, as I say, 
that that the Swedish language was created at Dvartstena uh, in its written form and in its fairly modern form. It's like you mentioned to me before the program that that modern scholars are recognizing that the Middle Ages wasn't a Dark Ages. No, uh, right. <laughs> that's an absurdity. <laughs> that, right? uh, yes, that that was so it was said, particularly during the Enlightenment, okay. and already at the Renaissance, many said so. But but uh, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, fest shift. What uh, yep. is that? You know what a fest shift? Yeah, for someone's birthday or, or yes. death. There are a lot uh, of famous articles. art historian yep. we, uh, here in Stockholm. Um, uh, Colleagues uh, uh, gave him a festschrift with the title uh, the, uh, the the light uh, the the, uh, so the medieval light uh, so the, uh, the the bright middle ages the bright middle ages <laughs> the, the, the light dark, ages <laughs> the bright middle ages and uh, and I think that that um, art historians etc they are now recognizing this show. Yeah, a great time of learning and education oh. and art. And as I said, science. we are now preparing the celebration of this painter yep. uh, from the, the, the end of the 15th century, beginning of the, of the 16th century. Well, Professor, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. Appreciate that. And, and uh, you're, you're also an inspiration for us in your becoming really Catholic, right? Not just Catholic, <laughs> but real Catholic. So thank you very much for joining us on the journey home. Thanks for staying with us. Ulf Samuelson's love of good music increasingly led him to the Catholic Church. A director of church music, his first exposure to the Catholic faith was handling the music for a Catholic Church. He's now also the music consultant for the Diocese of Stockholm. Ulf, welcome to the Journey Home. Thank you. It's great to meet you. Oh. And uh, we have many things in common besides the fact we're both uh, former Lutherans, now Catholics, but we both have a great love for music, and I know yes, that you're very much yes. involved with that now. But I would, in each journey home, I ask the guests to begin by starting at the beginning and giving the audience a little summary of your early spiritual journey. Okay. I'm born in 1959 in the north of Sweden, more than 1,000 kilometers from Stockholm, north, direction right. north, in a Lutheran priest family. My father was priest in the Lutheran... Your father was a priest? My father, yes. All right. <laughs> and also my grandfather, <laughs> in that we in Sweden called uh, the Swedish Church. Yes. It's a, not a good name, but they called the Swedish Church. That means the Lutheran, big Lutheran Church. The state church. State church, yes, yes okay. in Sweden. And I grew up in a very nice uh, family with five smaller children. No, not children, uh, also sisters and brothers. Yes. yes. So I'm the oldest of six. Okay. And, uh, and my mother was at home when we are small. It was very good for me. And I go to church every Sunday with my parents and so. And then I... Uh, I figure that with a father as a Lutheran pastor, yes. you were catechized well? Uh, you learned the faith well, yes. I would assume, uh, if your father was a pastor? Yes, yes. <laughs> And, and uh, I was uh, in very in the beginning when I was very small. I was very interesting in music, so I started play piano and violins and so when I was seven, six, seven years old, and then singing in the children choir in the church and, and so as many other priests' uh, <laughs> child in Sweden. Sure. And uh, yes, on, on this way it was, and we moved around five years on this place and five, five years or four years on another place. Typical Mostly in, life. yes, typical Lutheran priests. Not now, but f then back. Then. back. Yeah. And then we, uh, mostly in North Sweden. Yes. And uh, I, the tradition, perhaps you can call it a little like high church. Hmm. Uh, many people know high church, the Anglican high church, and right. it's a bit the same. 
with the Anglican Lutheran, the high church Lutheran in Sweden. So very high emphasis on following the traditional Lutheran liturgy with music and robes and... Yes, as a high church is, is in, in the Swedish church, they are stay more near the, 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 the real Catholic church yes. than the normal Lutherans right. and so. And um, it's, yes, so I, I grew up in this uh, good, good, uh, up, how to say, upgrowing. Yes, yeah. good, good upbringing and good catechetical training. Yes, you learned your faith yes. and very good. Then I came to Stockholm when I was about 20, 21 years old for studying on the Royal Music University here in Stockholm, mm -hmm. church music. I was sure when I was 20 years that my uh, that my future was is to be a, a church musician. And I met a, a girl in my f class who was Catholic, and it was the first. Catholic young people I met uh, have mm. met. Uh, there were many. In the north of Sweden, I never see a Catholic ah, person. Ah, okay, all right. Uh, so, and I was very interested in the Catholic Church and asked her a lot of things. And on the way, it was so that um, uh, in the one of the two biggest Catholic parishes here in Stockholm, they need a church musician. And they asked her, but she doesn't, no, it's not for me, she said. But I have a friend in my class who I think is very interesting. I think he can be good. So in this way, that way, it was. So I, I begin 1981 as organist and choir leader mm -hmm. in Sankt Eugenia, the big Jesuit church in Stockholm, in the, in the city near the, the castle, the royal castle mm -hmm. in Stockholm here not so far away from this place. And I was there five years uh, during the, st until I, uh, my studies, hmm. church musician studies here in Stockholm. Was the, let me ask you here, was the, uh, the transition from playing for the Lutheran worship yes. very different no. to playing for the Catholic Mass? No, no. The, the Swedish Lutheran church after the Reformation, they don't uh, put. Uh, they behold, behold a lot the liturgy. You can mm. you can say so. So uh, so if you go in a Lutheran church in Sweden, uh, many people who come from abroad think it's it's is it's a Catholic church. <laughs> it's very similar with with uh, often ministrants and so. Yeah. Perhaps not bells and so, but it can can also have bells mm. and so. So it's 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 not not uh, it was not a big difference, okay. and I wasn't Catholic, but it was not problem for the Catholic parish. So I I were there five years and have five very good years, and I going also during this period when I was 21, 22, a conver converting or how to say convertation, uh, uh, conversion, conversion when, or conversations? Conver no, uh, when you convert. It, oh yes, conversion. Yeah, a course. Ah, okay. Uh, of so course, my, in training my, the Catholic yes, faith. for to be for be Catholic. Yes, but many, uh, how to say, many small things, one there and one there and one there, yeah. do that I don't take the step. 1982 was it, okay. but I stay there until 1986, and then I left Stockholm and have a hundred percent works in a Lutheran church in South Parish in South Sweden. All right. But after that, uh, when I, I not take the step, took the step to the home, uh -huh. to yeah. the Catholic Church, I have um, thinking about it, and also my wife, uh, perhaps not every day, but at least every week <laughs> from 1982, and thought, shall we do, shall we not? So, so. so. and it, in 2006, we say, no, we cannot, no, we cannot wait longer. <laughs> we must go. Even if it's perhaps a big problem for us to stay as um, uh, musicians in the Lutheran Church, uh, so so we take this step. What were the big? You had a few things that were standing in the way back then. What were those? Yes, it's it's it was small thing. One thing perhaps it was that my father was priest in the Lutheran Church. Sure. I grew up there, and if I be Catholic, I couldn't go to the Eucharist to my own father, and he shall not be be angry on me if I have done it. Mm -hmm. 
but it was some feelings in me also. Yeah. It was, was one, not big, but one small. Another was that I, I, I I'm grow, um, grow up in the country of Sweden, so not in the big city mm -hmm. in the north, and I liked it. So and I, I have it was a case studying in Stockholm, but but living in Stockholm with children and so on. no, it was not my mm. um, good for me. I, I thought. So uh, and and then it was so that if I, I moved from Stockholm, it was no possibility to have a Catholic uh, works as, as a musician in the Catholic yeah, Church. Right. It's, There's no church. Yes, no, there. no. Is it possible? But for 25 years, it was only in here in the dorm and in Sankt Eugenia. Ah. They could pay. Sure. Yes. So I and this was not big, but. Uh, and some small like well, this. Well, there are issues. There, when you're, when yes. you're making a conversion, it's the same yes. thing in America. When, yes. Especially for uh, I, the work that I do in America is I work with Protestant ministers who become Catholic. Well, yes. when they make that journey, there's theological problems, yes. but there's sometimes practical issues. Yes, yes. How are you going to support your family? And yes. Those are important issues. Yes. And it was also so that I, as many other high church people in the Lutheran church, think, thought that perhaps in the future we can be a union with... Reunited. Yes. Or we think... Many thought, I thought also perhaps that my place... I, I was born in Sweden, and here is the big church, the Lutheran church, and it's... No, I'm born here, and it's perhaps my um, place... Um, to stay there and uh, yeah. do the best and so but often uh, no it's not possible it's it's the roman catholic church for me <laughs> yes so your wife came in with you yes yes so it's just well, it's we were no problem she was yeah. always lutheran too yes the, the, yes from the beginning yes okay so the same journey what about were there any theological problems for you in becoming catholic from your theolo your lutheran upbringing no, no, no problem with many people think about Maria or so. No, no problem. And it, it's, um, it was one of the reasons that I have very big problems to, to pay to the Lutheran Church and be a member of the uh, very small nationalist, national church. Yeah. Politicals uh, decide everything. Yeah. And the bishops are more like... Um, so, um, mans, they have no, nothing to say. It's most yeah. for the clothes and so, uh, for the ceremonies and so. Yeah. So, so it, it and and this that and that the, the Catholic Church was the worldwide church, and it was the first church. Jesus grounded the church once, only once, and it was the Catholic Church, and and then the Swedish Church come five, one thousand five hundred years later. And when I think you about that, it's it's. Oh, it's not possible to stay there longer. <laughs> but yes. Now, so you're now you're involved with music in the Catholic Church. Yes, I'm still um, organist in the, the big Lutheran church in uh, my town, Örebro, in the okay. middle of between Stockholm and Gothenburg, and um, and I can stay there. And the, the parish they they like me and so so it's, uh, it's okay for them there. Mm -hmm. So, but no, I have uh, how to say uh, I'm free from this. For for a, a period, yes. So I have half fifty percent, and then I have a, um, a work on a new work on the diocese of Stockholm, the Catholic diocese of Stockholm, as um, on seventy five percent, as um, we call it in Swedish music consultant. I don't know in okay. English. Uh, I was the a consultant. Yes, uh, music uh, for music for, for the diocese. All right. So I shall uh, put that are just... uh, put for uh, how to say. Um, you, you, you put your stamp on good music or bad music? Yeah, yes, yes, and and uh, and they give um, ah, I don't find a word. Some direction to the music. You know, I was wondering, uh, uh, that in America, for example, after the the Vatican Council, yes, not because of what was said in the Council, but because of what happened, happened after the yes. Council, that a, a lot of different ideas came into the church about music and the place of music and what kind of music and what's yes. appropriate in music. Are you fighting those same battles here in, in Sweden when it comes to music in the Catholic churches? Yes, I think uh, many things perhaps not be as the intention of the second right. was. But I think it's, in my way, in my mm -hmm. opinion, better now 
than when I was here for 25 years uh, in as uh, more Gregorian, uh, how to say in English, yeah, Gregorian, right, Gregorian chant, chants, and uh, and uh, not so many experiments. Yeah. And it's so I think it's perhaps a little slow, perhaps, but back on a more uh, normal way with with many things, but not not only on. Right. Do you? So then, that's probably what your work is here in the diocese: is overseeing the yes, direction of the music in the diocese. Yes, and inspired the choir leaders and the choirs. We have not so many choirs, many parish Catholic parishes in Sweden are, yeah, not so small, but they have not so lot of money, and they have all perhaps only amateurs, mm -hmm. and they do it with they have another work and do it on their free time, mm -hmm. and they they need um, help. And uh, courses, mm -hmm. you say courses, yep. and s smaller educations for ha helping them to conducting and play organs and so mm -hmm. on. And, and that's my uh, th things like this I shall do. Especially organ. I, in America, we have a shortage of organists, and that's always a problem of getting our young people to mm. learn how to play the organ because we have these churches with organs that yes. people need to learn how to play. Is that still a problem here? Yes, it is, and also in the Lutheran Lutheran uh -huh. Church. That it's when I studying for 25 years ago, it was much more mm -hmm. more who searching to the, the to the school than yeah. it's now. So it's a little problem. But it's a lot, a lot of Catholics, I think, who shall go a, a shorter course. We started in, in, in September, and many of them are young. Well, that's a great. I think the church good, should be good. even funding it more because uh, I think if we, like you said, it's coming around again. And I think in America, I'm seeing that there's an interest in Gregorian chant again. Yeah. In parishes, which is great, so young people are learning chant, yeah. and huh? maybe they'll learn organ. But it's still, we've got a long way to go, but it yes. seems to be a positive oh, thing. Mm -hmm. But similar here in, in Sweden, right? Are you seeing a, a rebirth of some of the interest in that? Yes, I can. I, it's, it's difficult to say, but yeah. per, perhaps we, we, we have we have persons who are interesting mm -hmm. in, the, in the Catholic Church. Perhaps not so many, but but there is, and also young people. Also. Now, in the High Church Lutheran, yes, is the music similar? As in the Catholic Church? Yes. Yes. Um, as, uh, also in the Lutheran Church in Sweden, uh, it's, it's a lot, lot of uh, Gregor, Gregorian yeah. music, perhaps much more than in other Lutheran churches in other countries. Right. Uh, they, they uh, how to say, receive, um, uh, they don't get it away when after the Reformation. Yeah. Behold, they behold, the, church, the Lutheran Church behold it. So, so it's not a big difference. So. It's one thing I've noticed that um, in Sweden, you didn't seem to have the, uh, the demolishing of the Catholic traditions during the Reformation that happened in Germany or in England. And it was a much, uh, more, the break was much um, harder in, 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 for example, Germany than in yeah, Sweden. Right. Uh, yeah. so. And we also have a, a king, uh, 100 to 150 years after the Reformation, who tried to bring it back. Bring it back, but it crashed. But he tried. So, <laughs> so, um, so yes. And, and people, so so many Catholic, uh, how to say, um, ideas and so, still is in the Lutheran Church. But they are also very liberal, very liberal in the meaning of abortion and, and uh, marriage and. Uh, the priests and so. Was that a big change for you in the view from the Lutheran to the Catholic Church in the pro-life areas, or was it similar in the High Church Lutheran? Do they have the same values? Uh, they, the High Church Lutherans have, have the same as the Catholic, mm -hmm. but the High Church Lutheran are not uh, so. Um, uh, they don't like the, the, the official Swedish Church. Don't like the High Church, uh -huh. so they put uh, more and more out. No uh -huh. bishops. So who are high church and so, and no no priests, new priests who are high church. Uh, they put it so, really yes in in a corner. So, so like this. Yes. So maybe those high church Lutherans will become Catholic. Yes, <laughs> I think you see that you yes. think so. Huh? Yes, you know, many many be there. I think so in the future. In the future, yeah. Because we soon in the Lutheran church have marriage be, be, between man and man and woman and woman and. Um, and the state decide that, but the Swedish Church, the Lutheran Church, say yes. We also we do as the state said. 
and, and then I think for many people it's this the border. Yeah. But here I can go here, but not longer. Right. And, and so I think uh, yeah. I hope so. Well, that's happening in America. <laughs> yes, know, also, the yeah. mainline denominations yes. are, are following culture, which yes. is, is yes, sad. Yes, following culture. Yeah. So that's a place where the High Church Lutheran and relative, really stands. Relative, what he said, the Pope, relative, the relative, yeah. relative. Rel yeah, yeah. Uh, the name in Relativity. Um, Relativities. Yeah. Yes. Uh, where truth is, uh, what's good for you is yes, not good for me, yeah, it's relative. It's, if, yeah. if it's true for you, it's good. Yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, that's, yes. That's running. We, in America, when we think of Sweden, often we only think about the sexual revolution. Yes. Right? That's the image. <laughs> yes, it's, 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 but that would have been the, the high church Lutherans who have been fighting against that. Then yes, time, yes, right? they do, they do, they do. All right. Yes. One of the questions, since you're much, so much involved with music, I'm not sure that, that Catholics always appreciate how important the music is to the liturgy. Yes. How important music mm -hmm. is to prayer. Yes. You know, talk about that, because that's your life. Uh, so, uh, you mean many Catholics don't understand that? Yeah, many Catholics don't even appreciate how important good music yes. is to worship. Yes, I think it's very, very important. And if you say, uh, we, o we often talk about our old churches, it's very, we will we'll have them, and it's uh, pre people have prayed here before. And in the same way, we can say that the Gregorian music is the church music, yeah. and the church have used it for a long time. So we, we must, we must um, take care of it. And, and in the same way, we must take care of the old churches because mm -hmm. people have prayed there before us and so. And I also think uh, even other music, of course, than Gregorian, but it's, it's necessary with good music. It's a help for us to, to worship God, I think. Yeah. But in Sweden, perhaps little in the Catholic Church, many priests and others also perhaps think about music as a, bit, a little bit lux, luxus. If, if, if you have a person who can, can play and so, and without money, uh, <laughs> it's, it's good. But if you don't have, it's, yeah, sorry, but it's, it's not so necessary. Uh -huh. and, and that, this, I don't like this. I, am, I think it's... Of course, you can have a, a, a mess without music. It's, possi it's sure. possible, but it's not uh, the normal. The normal way must be we have music. And if you read uh, the Second Vatican yep. uh, about music, it says that the finest way to have a mess, celebrate a mess, is with music. In fact, I yes. recently read the uh, Pius X had ah. an encyclical about music. Pius X. Yes, yes. He, and uh, I took his name when I was a confir the confirmation name is Pius. Yes, me, all right. Th the town. He had, uh, he, and what he emphasized in his encyclical on church music is still the norm for what we believe today. Yes. In which he basically says that the primary music of the Mass is singing. Yes, yes, that's the primary. That's the primary. And he allowed organs. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was funny. And, but for men in, in today, is it not the primary? The primary is a reading mass. Yeah. And I think you can have a reading mass, but the primary shall it's be a singing, singing mass. That's yes. right. And right. then you must have good musicians also. That's right. Audience. But that's also the beauty of Gregorian chant in that, um, I mean, you can, you can sing the mass and you don't have to go all over the place. You know, if everybody can sing a note you know, then that allows everyone to sing together. That's the beauty of the Gregorian yes, chant. Yes. Sometimes the modern music that's added into the mass makes it complicated. It sounds like a performance. People don't feel comfortable. I can't sing that, yes. so they don't sing. They just mm -hmm. read it. And I do believe the return to the Gregorian chant is really to return to the simplicity yes. of singing the mass so that everyone can sing. You know, the power Many people said Gregorian music is difficult, but I don't think it's, it is. For if you ask young people, my children or other young, they often like very mu much Misa de Angelis and other yeah. Gregorian. And yeah. it's not difficult. And we also have another problem, and that some, some churches think that the primary instrument for the Mass is the organ, so that people don't sing, they just listen to the organ. Ah, okay, okay. That's and good. that's common in Protestantism. <laughs> yes, yes. Big organs. Yes, uh, yes. And, and again, that's the organ is there is to help the singing. Yes, the leading, but not uh, over... Overpowering. Over, over, no, no. But you can, with a good organist, uh, with good 
playing can inspire the, the the parish to sing more. Yes, yeah. But it's it's a art lifts the artist. cantors, give the cantors courage yes. to stand uh, forward with the organs, helping them yeah, yeah. sing but not overpowering them. Um, well, I, uh, Ulf, thank you so much for uh, yes. your, your interview yes. and uh, God's blessings on uh, you in your work with music uh, and thank your you. family and the church. Yes. And uh, it's good to meet another musician <laughs> yes. around, you know, halfway okay. around the world. Good to meet you. God bless. Thank you. Uh, God bless you too. Thank you for joining us in this episode of The Journey Home. I hope you've been inspired by this story of a convert here from Sweden and a musician that's challenging us in our music to, to sing the Mass and appreciate the Mass, to let the, the great praise of God resound. So thank you for joining us on this episode of The Journey Home. See you again soon.